Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. We thank you. We bless the name of the Lord. I'm so excited, glory to God, that this is another day. Glory to God, that God see fit to wake us up early this morning. Glory to God. I give him the honor. I give him praise. I give him glory. Hallelujah. Glory to God. This is the day that the Lord has made. Come on, my brothers and sisters. Glory to God. Facebook Live, Conference Live, glory to God. Come on, let's give God some glory. Let's give him some praise right where we are, right near, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Let's lift up holy hands, glory to God. Let's shabbat the Lord in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Let anything that has breath praise the Lord today. This is a great day, glory to God, to give God all glory, all praise, all honor that's due to his name, glory to God. Come on, the word of God said, praise be the Lord. Praise him in your sanctuary. Right there where you are is your sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Glory to God. Give him glory. Give him act. Praise him for all the wonderful things that he has done in your life in the name of Jesus. So I don't know about you, but I come to praise his name this morning. I come to uplift him. He's worthy, y'all. He's truly worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun, even when the sun sets. Our God, Jehovah God, our master, our daddy, glory to God, our beginning and our end, our alpha and our omega, our glory to God, our loving father is worthy to be praised. Come on, give him some praise. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Everyone, right now we're going to have overseer Brooks to take us to the throne room of grace. Glory to God. Good morning, everyone on Facebook and everyone on conference, conference call line. Yes, yes. <laughs> Let us pray. Dear eternal Father, most holy Father, we come to you once again just giving you thanks. Thank we you, thank Jesus. you, Father, for this day. We thank Hallelujah. you for allowing us to be amongst the land of the living. Yes, For waking Lord. us up in our right state of mind and giving us new connections and allowing us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins. Yes. Thank you for saying this is just pleasing in your eyes. We thank you for allowing us to come into your house one more time to give you all honor and praise on this day. Hallelujah. Come lifting up the shepherd of the household. Yes, this Lord God. Heavenly Father. We know we have, that you have instilled a word in her, Heavenly Father, for your people on today. And we pray, Heavenly Father, someone will get to know you on this day. So we give you all honor and praise on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, praise the praise from right where you are. God deserves all the praise, all the honor. All the glory is due to his name. Hallelujah, glory to God. I'm excited about the word and the message that God has for us on this day in the times that we are living in, in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Grab your sword of the spirit and turn with me, glory to God, to 2 Kings, 2 Kings, the seventh chapter. 2 Kings, glory to God. There is a word, glory to God, from the throne room of God for us. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Again, turn with me to 2 Kings. 2 Kings is right before 1 Kings. Yes, indeed. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's right. I'm, I'm sorry. It's right after 1 Kings. Glory to God. And it's right before 1 Chronicles. 2 Kings chapter 7. Chapter 7. And I will begin reading at verse 3. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I thank the Lord. I bless them. I praise them. Glory to God. For the great manifestation that he's doing in our lives right now in the name of Jesus. But 2 Kings, glory to God, verse 3. Second, I'm, I'm sorry, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 3. And it reads as follows. Near there were four leprous men at the entrance of the gate. And they said to one another, why are we sitting here until we die? If we stay, we will enter the city. The famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit there, we die also. Now, therefore, come, let us surrender to the army of the Syrians. Uh, uh -uh, if they keep us alive, then we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall live. Glory to God, we shall die. I'm sorry. Verse 5. And those roads at and they rose at twilight to go to the camp of the Sumerians. And when they had come to the outskirts of the Sumerian camp, to their surprise, 
no one was there. For the Lord had caused the army to hear the noise of the chariots and the noise of horses, the noise of a great army. So they said to one another, look, the king of Israel has hired against us the kings of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to attack us. Therefore, they arose and fled at twilight and left the camp intact, their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, and they, and they fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the outskirts of the camp, they went into one tent and ate and drank and carried from it silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried some from there also and went and hid it. Then they said to one another, we are not doing right. This day is a day of good news and we remain silent. If we wait until morning light, some punishment will come upon us. Now therefore, come, let us go and tell the king household. May the Lord bless the reading, the hearing, the understanding and interpretation for revelation and transformation in our lives today. Go with me one more time to the throne room of grace. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you for this wonderful day, Lord God. We give you the honor, we give you the glory, for you alone is worthy to be praised, Lord God. We thank you for our health and our strength, Lord God. We thank you for being a shield of protection around us late in the midnight hour, Lord God. We thank you for your angels that are camp around our homes and the homes of our family members, Lord God, that no danger, hurt, or harm came now to us, Lord God. We give you the glory for this wonderful day, for Father God, as you minister to the word, to our spirits, oh God. Oh, Father God, uplift someone's spirit in here today, Lord God. Uplift someone, glory to God's soul, Father God. Give them strength, Lord God. Give them hope in their hopeless situation, oh God. Show up, Lord God, when they least expect you to, in the name of Jesus. And we be sure to give you the honor and the glory on this day, Lord God. Thank you for the four corners of your wind, which is the Roha the pneuma of God, the breath of God, the life of God, blow into every heart, blow into every nostril of your people, Lord God, refresh them, revive them in the name of Jesus. But most of all, Lord God, in all that are getting today, let your word change them and conform them to the image of your son, Lord God. And we give you the glory and the honor in Jesus' name. As I step back, you step up, Lord God. Hand our way, Holy Spirit. Speak through the airways. Speak through the Wi-Fi's. Speak through the connectivity in the phone lines and the Facebook lines and all the other lines out there in the satellite world, Lord God. And we begin sure to give you the glory and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Hallelujah. Bless them, bless them, bless them. Bless his name in here today. Glory to God. For truly he's worthy to be praised. But I would like to use, glory to God, a title for this passage. Glory to God. A title for this passage. That we are in the Second Kings chapter 7. I just read verses 3 through 9. And the passage that I would like to use for this, glory to God, for this, the title I would like to use for this passage is, Don't Just Sit There. Do something. Don't just sit there. Do something. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. In other words, I want to let I want to let you know today. Glory to God. Don't settle for where you are right now. Don't settle. Glory to God for less. Glory to God. Don't settle. Glory to God. Thinking, glory to God, that this is the end of your life. No, glory to God. It's time to get up and do something. I want to let you know, glory to God, there's a shifting in the atmosphere, glory to God. And we read in this text that it was at twilight that the four lepers rose up, glory to God. And the meaning of twilight means to be in a place of transition. 
It's a place of shifting glory to God. It's the place of neutrality. It's the place that seems like nothing is happening, and you can't even define what's going on in your life right now. You don't even know which way to go. You don't know which turn to take, glory to God. But this is twilight, glory to God. It also means to be in a place where things are not already defined. You are in a place where things are not yet defined for you, glory to God. But glory to God, you refuse to just sit there and die. You refuse, glory to God, just sit there and settle for less. You refuse, glory to God, just take anything, glory to God, as it is hopeless and helpless in our lives in the name of Jesus. And the prefix for twine, which is TWL, means two. So we are safe saying that twilight means to be between two lights. Twilight means to be between two lights. In Genesis chapter 1, 14 and 16, tells us that God created two lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. So when these lights change and shift, <laughs> you are in twilight. It changes it change shift from either from the daytime to sunset or from the nighttime to sunset. Glory to God. But either way, glory to God, it is called twilight, a change of shift and glory to God. And so I want to let you know, glory to God, I don't know who you are today. And even us as the world, even us as a nation, with what, everything going on with the changes, we are shifting glory to God. God, God is changing us and shifting us glory to God. We're in a place in between right now, a place that has not yet been defined in the name of Jesus. But that's the great place when you trust God because you trust God for your future. You trust God that God is leading you. Those who put all their trust in the Lord, glory to God, hallelujah, should not lean to their own understanding, but acknowledge them in all their ways and he will direct your path. So glory to God. So I just want to let you know, glory to God, hallelujah, don't just take anything. Don't just accept anything, glory to God. There is a time, glory to God, that God wants to shift us and give us a better life, those who have a desire for it in the name of Jesus. So glory to God. So don't just sit there, do something. Just, I want to let you know that just before a great experience, glory to God, to conquest, a great experience to victory. You got to expect there are going to be some great struggles in your life. You got to know that, glory to God. Today, many are, per are perplexed who encounter the season of adversity, who is encountering the season of lack, the, the season of loneliness, the season, this season of being isolated, this season of sickness, this season of much loss, glory to God. Even committed Christians. Even committed believers, glory to God, hallelujah, find that their hearts, glory to God, are being tested. Their faith in these fiery trials are challenging them, glory to God, to stand when they don't see no reason to stand, glory to God. And I want to let you know that behind, glory to God, these smiles that you may see on the faces, glory to God, hallelujah, some of us are wrestling with hopelessness. Some of us are wrestling with helplessness, but God's God in severe testing, God's God is changing your home, and the severe testing is turning your home and turning your jobs and your business and your ministry and your relationship and even your own mindset into a dull and, and dry, isolated wilderness, glory to God, or a dull or dry. Famine is in the land, glory to God. But I want to encourage you today, glory to God. Did you know that even if the famine is still, glory to God, is in your midst? Did you know if it looks like it's endless or helpless? Did you know that God still can provide a way out? Did you know that God is still God and he's still in control, glory to God? Doesn't matter what's going on around us. Doesn't matter how hopeless and endless and glory to God and helpless the situation may seem, glory to God. God is still God. God can provide a way out. God will give you a way to escape in the name of Jesus. He can give you glory to God. He can restore you. He can revive you. He can replenish you, glory to God. I want to let someone know today, you can survive these times that we are living in today. 
with the greatest victory of an God expected in with a hope and a future going, going to God that you have never dawned on in the name of Jesus. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Some of you just seem so hopeless and helpless. Some of you just confused, glory to God. Some of you just don't know what to do next. And, and you're just sitting right there, haven't been out, haven't done nothing with your life. You have just put your life on hold since the coronavirus. But I want to let you know today, don't just sit there. Do something. Don't just settle where you are. There's greater for greatness waiting for you in the name of Jesus, glory to God. And here in this text, glory to God, we can see that, glory to God, there was great victory. There was a great conquest after a great famine in the land. And glory to God, in this text, glory to God, we will discover four leprous men at the gates of the city. And they were sick with a disease stricken to them. And it was a, a, good, a terminal disease of sickness, glory to God. And by law, if they came within 10 feet, glory to God, of another person, they would cry out, they had to cry out, unclean, unclean, which tells me not only had they lost their connection with society, but also they had to be, they had to be abandoned, they were rejected, they were isolated from their family and friends. Do y'all sound familiar with where we have been since March, since this COVID-19? Glory to God. Hallelujah. Put a mask over our face when we go out. Keep six feet distant from glory to God, from anyone. Glory to God. Isolate from our family, from our friends. Glory to God. Does that sound familiar? Imagine us, glory to God. Us saying every time we go into a store, unclean, unclean. That means glory to God that, hey, keep your distance from me because I'm carrying a contagious, glory to God, disease in the name of Jesus. Oh, glory to God. And here are these four lepers, glory to God. They've been abandoned. They've been rejected. They were isolated from their family and friends. And please note, glory to God, during this time of famine, the cost, glory to God, the cost of food, was highly expensive. It stored the increase of sore glory to God. Also, I want you to take note that during this famine, it lasts so long that a donkey's head was sold, glory to God, for 80 pieces of silver and a cup of dove of bird poop was sold for silver. They were so desperate, glory to God, they would cut off a donkey head to eat and it was sold for a high price Christ, glory to God. But not only that, imagine bird poop, glory to God. A dove poop, glory to God. They were selling a cup, one cup of dove poop, glory to God, for money. That was a desperate time of famine. We're talking about glory to God, this COVID-19, and what we had to do with the economy. It's nothing compared to what they had to do back then during this time of famine. But not only that, I want to let you know, glory to God, that this family was so severe that women, they were boiling their children in hot water and eating them. Oh my goodness. What type of mindset would they in to do such a cruel act, which was against the word of God. They was boiling their children and eating them. So this family, glory to God, the citizen there, they were eating whatever they can because they was hungry, but they went beyond being hungry. They was in a place of salvation, glory to God. We, we use that word hungry so loosely. I'm so hungry. We all know what it really feels like to be hungry. We all know what it really feels feel like to have a lack. We don't know what it really feels like to have no food on the table. We don't know what it really feels like to go to God, to be in a land of family. We go to God, we so hungry that we got to go outside and look for bird poop or dog poop to eat or cut off, or cut off a head of an animal. But more than that, you will be so desperate that you will boil your children and eat them. Good God Almighty. Oh, we're talking about something here that was so severe. Glory to God. So in this city, we see there was no hope. All hope was gone. Everybody thought they were just going to die, and they would do whatever they got to do to survive for that moment. 
But I want to let you know, a promise of hope was desperately needed there. And these people, glory to God, a Samaritan, they needed hope, and they needed hope right away. They needed hope right near, glory to God. And I thank God, glory to God, they was in a, a place called Twilight. They had no idea that the, glory to God, that the times was about to shift. They had no idea, glory to God, that God was going about to change their life. They had no idea that God was going to come suddenly and unexpectedly, glory to God, at twilight. Hallelujah, glory to God. Oh, just get used to hearing the word twilight. That means there's a shifting. There's a change in the atmosphere. Glory to God. Don't you just get settled where you are. Don't you sit there and give up. Don't you sit there and say there's no hope for you. All oh, the devils are lying. Hallelujah. If you woke up this morning, then this is a new day of reformation. This is a new day to receive in our glory to God, revelation for transformation and the renewing of your mind through the word of God today. Hallelujah. But let me give you four points here, glory to God. What can we learn from these four lepers to gain hope? What can we learn from these four lepers, glory to God, to get great conquest where we are today in the name of Jesus? Yeah, we may not have a famine so severe that we got to go outside, eat bird poop, and have to, we have to pay for it. And then we go to God, we got to pay for going to our animal here. Go, can you imagine that over here? All them deers in our backyard. Can you imagine chopping off the head and selling them to eat glory to God in the name of Jesus? Lord, behold, boarding our children. Lord, behold, boarding my grandchildren. Ah, oh, sex glory to God. So let's see, glory to God, what lesson can we learn here from these four lepers to gain hope and, and to great, gain great conquest? Number one, examine your position where you are. Examine your position. What you saying, Pastor Brooks? I'm saying the four lepers were sitting outside the city gates of Samaria. Mm. They said to each other, we have nothing to lose. I can imagine, I'm just paraphrasing this. They say to each other, look, we have nothing to lose. <clears throat> We're going to die anyway. Let's just go down to the enemy's camp and see what's going on down there. Hey, <laughs> glory to God. In other words, they knew that this was not their final stop. They knew, I'm not going to get stuck where I'm at right here. They knew, glory to God, they're not going out like this, glory to God. They examined their position, glory to God. And they examined their position, glory to God, and made a decision that we are not going to die without making an effort to do something. And that's what you got to do. You got to examine your position and make a decision, glory to God. You're not going out like this without trying to do something. Oh, glory to God. Because we all face situations that looks impossible. Oh, yes, we do. And it's easy to get discouraged. And we think about how it's never going to work out. But we need to keep the right perspective of our position in Christ. Those of us that are believers in Jesus Christ, our Lord, and our Savior, glory to God. You got to know, glory to God, that he has given us the riches of his glory. And the riches of his glory is glory to God. It's his peace. It's his strength, glory to God. It's his favor. It's his power. It's his authority, glory to God. Hallelujah. We, you got to examine your position. You are, glory to God. He seated with Christ. You have been raised up with Christ. And now we are seated with Christ in heavenly places. What you mean, Pastor Brooks, glory to God? You are joint heirs of Jesus Christ. Examine your position. You have to settle for less, glory to God. God got something better for you in the name of Jesus. Know who you are in Christ. Know who he is in the name of Jesus. I told you last week, once you find out your identity, Christ's identity, then you can find out your identity in the name of Jesus. Get up. Don't just sit there and do nothing. God has already, hallelujah, has the solution for your life. Nothing you are facing is a surprise to God. It may look complicated to you, but to him, it's a simple thing. What you're going through, 
is a simple thing. Glory to God. I want to let you know, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's a simple thing for God to give us a cure for the COVID-19. It's a simple thing for God to hold, to heal your body from glory to God, from headaches and backaches and arthritis, glory to God. Heal your body from pain and ache, glory to God, from high blood pressure, from diabetes, glory to God, from cancer, from tumors, glory to God. Even in your mind with depression, and anxiety and stress and schizophrenia and bipolar. It's the simple thing that God, glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. It's not com maybe complicated to you, but it's not complicated to God. It's a simple thing to God to promote you right where you are. It's a simple thing for God to give you increase right where you are. It's a simple thing to God to get that loan approved for you. It's a simple thing to God to heal your body. Like I said before, it's a simple thing to God to restore back to you your family. It's a simple thing to God to save your loved one. It's a simple thing to God, hallelujah, to make your enemies behave. It's no big deal to God. Examine your position. Nothing so hard for God to those he loved. There's nothing too hard for God to do it in your life. He spoke worlds into existence. He flung stars in the sky and refused it to come down. Good God Almighty, he knows how to get to your destiny. He knows how to get us to our destiny. It's a simple thing to God to give us what we need and to restore back to us. Uh, hallelujah. A life is much better than what we had before. I don't. I told you many times, I don't want the normal. I want to go beyond the normal. It's a twilight anointing that's on our life. God shifting us and changing us, glory to God, for a better place and a better glory to God position in him. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So God has much more for you. You just got to press and, pu and push your way through it. Get up and press and push your way to through it. Glory to God. But not only... Good God, the lesson we learned was to examine our position in Christ and examine where we are. But number two, explore your possibilities. Explore your possibilities. What you're saying here, Pastor Brooks, the four lepers never lost their faith. They never lost their faith. These lepers had heard about the enemy and the family in the city, and yet... They had faith to persevere and press towards the city of the enemy. You can't just sit there and let the enemy come to you. You remember the story of David and Goliath? There's times we got to just go to God, get our faith activated and press towards the enemy camp. What do you have to lose? Mm, 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 mm. So we got to act our, activate our faith in the times of hopelessness, in the times of discouragement. Did you know faith takes risks? Don't tell me you, you go, don't tell me you don't have you have faith and you don't take no risks. Faith takes risks. Faith, glory to God, honey, take risks to fail. Failure is not a bad thing. It's only how you look at it. The only time you fail is when you don't get up and try again. Failure means that, glory to God, there's a way, better way of doing it. Failure means, glory to God, that you got to learn from the situation. Glory to God. Failure does not mean, glory to God, that you are doomed and you are destroyed and there's no hope for you. Failure means, let's try this a different way. Hmm. Faith takes risk, and it's time for you to take a risk, glory to God. It's time to take a risk, knowing that when you take this risk, that God is with you, glory to God. And if it doesn't work out, you can trust God that he will give you the spirit of wisdom and the spirit of knowledge to try it again in the name of Jesus, glory to God. you got to explore your possibilities. Well, I want to let you know, glory to God, not only does faith take risk, but faith speaks to mountain. Stop speaking to the situation, glory to God, with negativity. Stop speaking to the mountain, knowing that your mountain is not going to increase or your mountain will not grow even larger. What's going to happen, glory to God? You'll muster seed faith 
Glory to God is stronger than any mountain that you have in your life. See, it's not the strength on the sides of the mountain that gonna give you victory. It's the sides of the faith and the sides of the faith that's inside of you that gonna give you victory. Can I get a witness in here? Glory to God. Stop looking at that situation and looking at the sides of it. But you wanna throw your possibility and know that the size of, of the faith that's inside of you is greater than any situation. Greater than any mountain in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Faith knows that God, with God, all things are possible. See, glory to God. Explore your possibility and know that all things are possible with God. If you look, if it looks impossible, you get to know God's right there. If it looks impossible, it's all God. Don't you get discouraged? You just get on your knees and say, God, give me the wisdom that I need to do, man. Show me my next move, God, in the name of Jesus. Put your faith into action. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. I don't know for you, but uh, it's a good thing to know to explore your possibilities that you can win by your faith. Faith always wins. Faith never loses. Glory to God. So not only glory to God, do, 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 do we have to examine our position? Not only do we should we explore our possibilities, but number three, you got to envision the promise. Envision the promise. Glory to God. What you're saying, Pastor Brooks, what's interesting, if you go back to chapter seven, and glory to God, go back to chapter seven and go back to and we begin with verse one. Glory to God. It said that Elijah, who was the prophet, said, Hear the word of the Lord. First says the Lord. Tomorrow, about this time, a sheep of fine, a sheep of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two sheaves of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. In other words, he's saying, "Glory to God!" Tomorrow, about this time, the economy going, the price is going down. In other words, he's saying, "Tomorrow, at this time, the famine will be over." Oh, shucks! Did you get that? He told them. He told them tomorrow. Tomorrow about this time, the famine will be over. Glory to God. So what's interesting in this verse 1, the prophet just said that the day before, he told them the day before, by this time tomorrow, there will be so much food that you will buy a loaf of bread for one penny. Okay? There's going to be so much food that you're going to buy a loaf of bread for one penny. Glory to God. And so that seemed completely impossible. After all we went through, and we are in, it's like we're in a, a heat, the heated part of the famine. And you're going to say, all of a sudden, it's going to shut down and shut off like that. That's how God works. God works suddenly. That's how he can do with this coronavirus. Tomorrow at this time, he's going to shut it all down and send a cure. And we will never hear about another death from the coronavirus disease. Oh, you better go here with your bad self. Hallelujah, glory to God. And that's what he said. There was no way in the natural, but we serve a supernatural God. He made a way when there seemed to be no way. Glory to God. So you better start rest assured that God has something by tomorrow. See, this is going to be by your faith. You got to envision the promise. You got to captivate the promise and envision the promise that tomorrow. Hallelujah. I could get back out there and do some greater things again tomorrow. I could turn on the news and I, I can hear about the decrease, uh, the rapid decrease uh, on the death of with this coronavirus. Tomorrow I can hear about new jobs opening, new employment. Tomorrow I can hear about my loan has been approved by God. Tomorrow I can hear the good news that God has in store for me. Tomorrow. This means that he can make things happen faster than you think. When it looks the most unlikely, get ready for the most high God, Elohim, to show up and surprise you. You better get ready in the name of Jesus. When it looks like things are unlikely to happen, that's when they're about to happen in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. But you got to keep the vision. He said tomorrow, Glory to God. Yet there may be seasons of testing. Yes, there may be seasons of waiting 
Yes, there may be seasons of you being faithful and doing the right thing when it's hard to do. But at one point or another, this season of testing is going to come to an end. You got to know this not going to always be like this. You got to know you're not going to always feel like this. You got to know you're not going to always be in a period of life. You got to know, glory to God, you're not going to always live where you are. You got to know it's time for you to get up and, and make a move. Why sit there? Why just sit there and die? Why just sit there and do nothing about your situation when the anointing and the power of God lives in of you, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, the spirit of truth, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of counsel is on your life. Why just sit there and settle for that? Hallelujah, glory to God. So you got to envision the promise. And that's what these four lepers did. They envisioned the promise. By tomorrow, you're going to have so much food that you're going to be able to buy one loaf of bread for one. Penny, glory to God. And you got to know, glory to God, so like these four lepers, you may feel like you in a family surrounded by difficulties, but my challenge to you today is to stay awake to the promise of God. Don't sleep on God's promise. Oh, stay awake, stay alert, stay sober. Keep that promise always before you in your spirit. Stay awake to God's promise. God made some promise to us. Oh, glory to God, my brothers and sisters. God made some promise to us, to our family and friends. God made some promise to me and my family. I'm not going to sleep on the promises because of what's going on around me in the name of Jesus. I'm going to keep my promises awake. I'm going to keep them in front of me. I'm going to keep them alert. I know God got a better plan for me. I know where I'm at. It's not the end. I know destiny don't stop right here where I'm at. And I'm not going to act like it does. I'm going to get on up, glory to God, and do something. But you got to envision the promise. Can you see yourself working again? Can you see yourself being promoted? Can you see yourself being raised and lifted up high? Can you see yourself being joyful again? Can you see yourself with your family members again and laughing and eating and having a good time? Can you see yourself being promoted? Can you see yourself being the manager? Can you see yourself being a CEO? Can you see yourself being operating in your gifting in ministry in the name of Jesus? Tomorrow! Hey! By this time tomorrow, there could be a shifting, a twilight anointing that's on our life. Glory to God. Hallelujah, glory to God. So don't just go to sleep on your spirit. God can work things out suddenly. He can work things out unexpectedly and in a way that you didn't even see it coming. coming. Have you ever been blessed in a way that you didn't even see that blessing coming? Have you ever been blessed when you said, glory to God, how in the world did God do something like this? You didn't ask for it. You didn't imagine it in your thought process. It just came suddenly. It came as a surprise in the name of Jesus, glory to God. Envision yourself, glory to God, and the promise of God that he made to you and your children and your children's children. Envision you being healed. Envision you being relieved from the pain. Envision your children coming back home. Envision your children working in ministry. Envision the promise. All things are possible to God. And I want you to stop and think, what can God do in your life by this time tomorrow? Oh, that's faith, that's faith over sin. I want to challenge you right now. And I want you to stop and think, what can God do in your life? Glory to God, by tomorrow. Think about the impossibilities, but yet... Our God, who's able to do things, the most high God. Oh, glory to God. I can think about a lot of things over here. By tomorrow, glory to God. He's going to shut the whole atmosphere. By tomorrow, glory to God. How we could get on the news broadcast that have been a cure for the COVID 19. By tomorrow, good God Almighty. Hallelujah. You could get your job back or it could be a promotion when you walk in the office and oh, your supervisor can say, hey, I just promoted you. I'm back tomorrow, glory to God. You can find that new home and you can oh, back tomorrow. You could be packing up your bags and packing up your things and say, glory to God, I'm going to my new location. I'm going to my new life that God has promised me. I envision myself 
walking in the house of God, preaching to many more than we had before. Hallelujah, glory to God. I don't know about you, but I envision the promise. And so glory to God. So what lessons can we learn from these lepers? Examine your position, number one. Explore your possibilities, number two. Envision the promise, number three, glory to God. And then number four, express the praise of God. What you say, glory to God. And what happened here, glory to God. As they went towards the enemy camp, something happened. See, nothing that will happen long you sit still. You got to take a risk and get up when, see, see it's just like in Joshua, when they're about to cross the Jordan River. Oh, no, this thing was different than what, what was different about, um, 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 going different, different than the Red Sea experience. See, Moses just extended his law and the sea departed. But this time, glory to God, they had to do something on their own. This time before God do anything, they had to do something. So before God departed the Jordan River, they had to make the first step. Good God Almighty. Before God depart your Jordan River, you got to make the first step. Glory to God. You want God to do a miracle? Then you got to make the first step. Glory to God. You want God to give you that promotion? You want God to give you that job? You want God to heal your body? You got to make the first step. Glory to God. By tomorrow. You got to know that God's going to do something. So as the four lepers walked towards the enemy's camp, God amplified the sound of their footprints, of uh, the footsteps going to God. If you read this going to God, as they were walking towards the enemy camp, the enemy, they heard a great sound. And the sound that they heard was like a great army of chariots and horses. And glory to God, they, didn't have, they had no idea. It was just four little diseased leper men. But what happened? See, glory to God, you got to know when, when you're about to embark a great blessing and great victory and you trust in God and you have examined your position in Christ and, and you have explored your possibility knowing that with God all things are possible and then you envision your promise, good God and God. You got that fight back in the inside of you, good God and God. And then glory to God. And what happened is that glory to God, it sounded like a huge army to your enemies, glory to God. And the enemy panicked. And what they did, they took off, glory to God. They took off running. And when they took off, they left all their food supplies, all their possessions, all their wealth. They left everything behind, glory to God. See, the lepers gathered what God had given to them from the enemies, and they went back and told the Israelites what had happened. But what I want to, I want to get, I want to just stay here for a minute, glory to God. I want to let you know that before your victory come, God will amplify you. What you saying here, Pastor? I gotta take my time. I'm getting excited. Glory to God because because it's time to express some praise. It's time to count your blessings right where you are. You can count what has happened to you, what you have lost, what you are experiencing. Glory to God. All the negative things. Glory to God. But it's time for you to count your blessings because after the victory. These four, God, these four lepers, they were, they had a duty to tell somebody what had just happened. They amplified their voice because God has amplified their footsteps. What you saying, Pastor Brooks? I'm saying, glory to God. As God get me to take you towards your breakthrough, glory to God, God is about to amplify you. What you mean you're going to amplify me, glory to God? Hallelujah, glory to God. First of all, I want to let you know, the word amplified, and I use that word because it's a strong word, because that's what happened right here in this text. God amplified the footprint of four little sick lepers, and this thousand men of, of a great army heard a sound that sound like great chariots and get great horses. What you mean? What I'm saying is that glory to God. When you get up and decide, glory to God, to do a work for the Lord, God will amplify you. 
Amplify means glory to God, to make something stronger, to make something bigger, to make something louder, or to make something more important. It means to increase and to expand and to expand glory to God for power and authority to the glory. Before me, glory to God, they will ever hear them. And I can imagine them walking with authority, walking with power, knowing that God was amplifying them, making them bigger than what they really are, making them stronger than what they seem to be. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And what happened, glory to God, this amplified me to increase the strength of with an electrical signal by means of an amplifier. I amplify it. It's the Holy Spirit, glory to God. And he amplifies our spirit. He amplifies our anointing when we are faced with challenges of life. He amplifies, glory to God, our praise. He amplifies our worship, glory to God. Oh, I want to let you know, glory to God, God is amplifying us right now. And what happens? He amplified their voice because God has amplified their footsteps. Are you going to God? What going to God? Do you want going to God? God to amplify you. Going to God. God will make you bigger than what you are. You think that you're a grasshopper, but when you know your position and when you have the vision, going to God. The possibilities, Lord God, hallelujah. And then you express some praise to God. God will amplify you. He will make you larger than what you really are. He will make you bigger than what you really are. God has the ability to magnify what you have in the name of Jesus. I know it may look small to you. I know it may look small to the creditors. I know it may look small to your supervisor. I know it may look small to your children, but it doesn't matter. It may look small to the ministry. Hallelujah. But God will amplify what he put in your hands. He will amplify what he put in your heart. He will amplify what he put in your, oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. Glory to God. He's the amplification God. I love it in Proverbs 28 verse 1. Proverbs 28, verse 1, and it tells us that the wicked flee when no one pursues. They were fleeing. They were fleeing from the camp and didn't know that nobody but God was pursuing them. And that's what the scripture said in Proverbs 28, 1. Your wicked, your, your, your enemies are going to flee. Although you're not pursuing them in the name of Jesus, they're going to think, glory to God, that a great arm is coming to them, but they don't know it's just little on you with a big God inside of you that's coming towards them in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, glory to God. And then it goes on to say, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Good God of my Overseer, hallelujah. The enemy in your house, the enemy all around you, the enemy on your job is going to flee, flee, although you're not pursuing them. These four lepers wasn't pursuing the enemy, they just want to know that they had to just get up and do something in the name of Jesus. It just so happened when they get up, they stumble over some blessings that they didn't expect. They didn't expect for the enemy camp to be without the enemy and all the gold and all the silver and all the food and all the possessions. Their chariots and their horses were left behind when you met the big stuff of God. Hallelujah. You will stumble into blessings you never thought that would come your way. Can I get a witness? Get on up. Don't just sit there and die. Hallelujah. Paul Psalms. 118, 17, and it states it, I should not die, but live and declare the works of God. In other words, to tell somebody what the Lord has done for me in the name of Jesus. And that's what happened here. They took the possessions and they hid the possessions. But praise God for the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Came back together and said, y'all, this is not right what we're doing. How can we have what God has blessed us with? How can we be ashamed what God has blessed us with? How can we go to God, not share with others the wonderful news, the good news of what God has done for us in the name of Jesus? You got to keep in mind, hallelujah, that those who know the good news are under an obligation to pass on the good news and tell somebody about what God has done. I don't know about you, but I 
that's why I say the last part of this is to express your praise to God. And you know what I say, why I say that? Because every time you tell somebody about what God has done for you, God amplify you. It's the praise. It's the praise. And your praise is enlarged. Your praise is increased. And somebody going to hear it and be transformed of the renewing of the mind. I'm going to ask you, what must I do to serve the God you serve? Can I get a witness? It's time to make a great sound. It's time to raise your voice of praise. Whatever you don't tell, whatever you don't turn into praise, it leads to pride. I want that to marinate that in your spirit. Don't be ashamed of what you had to go through to get where you are today. Whatever you don't turn to praise, it leads to pride. And pride leads to destruction. And God won't tell us, glory to God, if God has ever used you, if God has ever blessed you, if God has ever pulled you out of a pit, if God can ever deliver you, if God has ever set you free from drugs and alcohol, from lust, from sex, from anger, from rage, from jealousy, from depression. Hallelujah. Oh, don't you dare be ashamed to tell somebody about the God that pulled you out, about the God that you, as you was about to die, you decided to get up and you stumble over some deliverance. When you get up, you stumble over some good God, some pray, um, you stumble over some blessings, and you had no idea that when, when you decided to get up and apply for that job that you thought you wasn't qualified for, you stumble over the right people at the right time that took you under their wings, and they could God, train you and mold you to be glory to God, get ready for your next position in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to challenge you today. Whatever God done for you, you need to tell it. You need to tell somebody. Don't be ashamed of the blessings of God. Don't be ashamed of what God has done for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I want to let you know every testimony, every story you have is a form of praise. When you start telling others what God has done for you, and that's what these lepers said. We can't keep this to ourselves. We got to go and tell the king. Although whether the king will believe us or not, we got to go tell the kings of Hittites and the Egyptians what just happened to us in the name of Jesus. Don't you keep what you have to yourself. You better tell somebody what God has done for you. Hallelujah. For praise is not your own to keep. Praise is for you to give it all to God in the name of Jesus. Whatever God has done for you, you ought to praise him. Begin to praise him. Begin to turn your testimonies into praise. Begin to turn your messages into praise. Begin to turn your sorrow into praise. Begin to turn your healing into praise. Begin to turn your weakness into praise. Begin to turn your doubt into praise. Begin to turn your fear into praise. Knowing there was one time you couldn't sleep at night, but because I woke up this morning, that was enough to give God praise for. Do you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Although I don't have all the money I need, I want, but I got enough to pay my mortgage. That's enough to give him praise. Can I get a witness in the name of Jesus? What do you have inside of you that God can amplify? Is it your voice of singing? Is it your voice of laying on hands? Is it your voice and your testimony in the name of Jesus? I want to let you go. God's about to change your story. He's about to change your testimony. He's about to change your life. He's about to change your giftings. He's about to change the ministry that God placed inside of you. There's a shift thing going on, and God has amplified us, church, my brothers and sisters, in the name of Jesus. God has expanded you in the inside. He has increased you. He has amplified you in the name of Jesus. So when you begin to praise God, he begins to amplify your voice. He make your voice as a great army and that enemy that surround you got to flee in your home. When you begin to praise God in your workplace, he amplify your voice and that enemy in your workplace got to flee. Hallelujah. 
As Proverbs 28 tells us again, the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous, hallelujah, are as bold as a lion. Glory to God. I want to tell you, glory to God, it's time to wake up and let God amplify your voice. Let him amplify your footsteps in the enemy camp. Let him amplify your strength to stand. Let him amplify your power to fight God's way. Let him add to your life. He will increase you and promote you. God is changing your destiny. I know you thought that was your destiny where you are today, but I want to let you know God is changing your destiny in the name of Jesus. Get on up. Don't just sit there and die. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Don't just sit there and settle for anybody abuse against you. Don't just sit there with any type of relationship uh, that causes you pain and sorrow. You better get on up uh, and realize your life is more, more than that in the name of Jesus. I don't know about you, but I'm so excited. God is changing our step. He's changing our songs. He's changing our life. He's changing your story. Amplify your voice. And share the good news of what God has done for you in your life. And the good news about Jesus Christ. Someone need to hear your story. They need to hear that you was on drugs. They need to hear that you was a fornicator. You were filled with lust. They need to hear that you was a teenage teenage parent. But God brought you out. They need to hear your story. Let God amplify your praise and your worship. In the name of Jesus, glory to God. Tell somebody that you was on your way to hell, but God stretched his outstretched arm and pick you out of that horrible pit. Tell somebody you made a horrible mistake in your life, but God fixed that thing and turned it around. Amplify your story so God may get the glory in the name of Jesus. So we must not become so preoccupied with our own faith that we neglect, that we neglect to share it with those around us. I want to let you know God is up to something big in your life. Don't just sit there and do nothing. Take a risk of faith, my brothers and sisters, and watch God do a great work and amplify, increase you, enlarge you, make you bigger than what you thought you could ever be in his eyes. In the name of Jesus. So my conclusion to this, glory to God, those that hallelujah, don't know Jesus Christ the pardon your sin, and those that do know him, leprosy is like sin. This coronavirus is like sin. And we cannot always tell its effect, but left unchecked, the disease progressively get worse. It's time for you to check yourself out and see, glory to God, have you examined your position? Have you explored your possibilities? Have you envisioned the promise? And most of all, express the praise to God in the midst of where you are. And I guarantee you that God will make a change in your life at twilight. There is a twilight anointing for those who decide not to just sit there and settle for less, but to get up and do something. Even if you have to let some things go, even if you have to let some people go, get up and do something with your life. You should not die, but you should live and declare and proclaim and prophesy and tell the marvelous works that God has done in your life. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, we bless you, we praise you, Lord God, for reminding us, Lord God, that we don't have to sit where we are with this coronavirus, with the illnesses that's in the lives, the lack in the homes, Lord God, the disruption all around us, Lord God. We don't have to just sit there and die and do nothing. But Father God, amplify us in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, amplify our voice of praise. Amplify our power and authority in you, Lord God. Amplify our faith in larger, increase it, Lord God. Make it louder, make it more important than anything else, Lord God. Extend our power and authority, Lord God. Increase our strength, Lord God. Hallelujah, in the name of Jesus. Make us glory to God. 
make us down just than we ever been before and tell our story so others may be blessed in the name of Jesus. Let us not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which is the power of God that leads us into salvation, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, for your word today. Thank you for strength. Somebody got strength today. Somebody got hope today, Lord God. Oh, Father God, I thank you. Somebody got more power. Somebody got the tenacity back to go here and try it again, try it again. Put it in one more time. Go to them one more time. And as we go, Lord God, to the camp, Lord God, magnify our footsteps so when the enemy hear us, Lord God, they will flee before we even get there in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father God, we thank you and we bless you for those who are still working, Lord God. Continue to be a shield of protection around them, Lord God. Comfort those who are lost, loved ones, Lord God. Give peace to those who have a fearful and doubtful spirit, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. The peace of God, God, their hearts and minds, Lord God. And I give you the glory and the honor, Lord God. Renew our minds and our thoughts, Lord God. Be with us always. Though we walk into this valley of the shadow of darkness, Lord God, we're not going to fear no evil because you are with us. And we thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the twilight anointing that we are in between. A great blessing in the name of Jesus. I thank you and I bless you, Lord God. Let the souls of your people, Lord God, be encouraged. By the blood of Jesus, they are already covered. No weapon. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Shall form against them, Lord God. It shall form, but it will not prosper, Lord God. Heal them from every sickness and disease in the body. By your stripes, we already hear, Lord God. Bring comfort to dysfunctional homes, Lord God. Let peace be still in the name of Jesus. Give wisdom to those who have to make sound decisions for this next phase of this COVID-19 in the name of Jesus. And we be sure to give you the honor and the glory as we well express our praise to you. We praise you. Lord, we praise you. You've been so good to us. Lord God, we praise you. God, magnify our praise because you deserve all the honor, all the glory, all the praise unto you, Lord God. Just because we woke up, we praise you, Lord God, because that means to by tomorrow there could be a great possibility that change, a sudden change, can take place. We're going to try one more time, Lord God, to envision our promise. In Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen and thank God. God bless you all. I pray that you was encouraged, your spirit was enriched in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let God, please, glory to God. When you don't turn your situation to praise, you turn it to pride. Don't allow your, the devil turn your blessing from God to pride. But give God the praise and the honor and let him magnify, amplify your voice and your footsteps. And you watch what God will do next in your life. God is up to something great. So don't just sit there and die. I love you all. Glory to God. Meet me Wednesday night. Glory to God. We're doing a great series on family matters. Glory to God. We're going to talk about roles and responsibilities. Mothers, father, husband, wife, children. Glory to God. God truly blessing us because this is a great time while we're at home with each one, with everyone. How we should be as a family. Glory to God and relate to one another the way God wants us to relate to one another. So meet me Wednesday night, glory to God. Meet me, glory to God, Friday night. Thank God for everyone that came on a Friday night intercepting uh, prayer this past Friday night on our prayer line. God bless you. Thank you, God. It was short and sweet, but that's all that was needed. Glory to God, because we had a twilight moment in the name of Jesus. But join me this Friday and I... Uh, Go to God Friday Night Live at 7 15. And again, on Father's Day, we're going to be right here on Facebook Live and Conference Call Live on Father's Day at 11 a.m. I love you all. Thank you for continuing to give your tithes and offering on Give Lifty. Thank you for giving your love offering to me. Glory to God. I love you. I bl God bless you in the name of Jesus because we still got a house over on Allentown Road, Temple Hills, that we got to keep up. In the name of Jesus. And God is doing some great things over there. While the house is empty, when we get back into the house, you're going to see the great work that God 
has done in the house. So I'm so excited. Glory to God. Amen. Glory to God. Be encouraged. Be wise. Be safe, y'all. I know we're going to phase two of this glory to God social distance, but still be safe. Wear your mask, glory to God. Keep your distance, glory to God. But thank God we don't have to walk in those stores and say, I'm clean, I'm clean, like the four lepers did in the name of Jesus, glory to God. I love you all. God bless you, glory to God. Be safe, as I said before, and see me Wednesday night right here again on Facebook Live and Conference Call Live. Congratulations to all, all, everyone from elementary school, Go to middle school, from middle school to high school, from high school to college, or just graduate from high school. I love all our graduates in the name of Jesus. Keep everyone lift up in prayer. I love you all. God bless.